All right, so in the last lecture, uh, so we looked at two different approaches. One was the parameter server approach. And the other one was ring all reduce algorithm, right. So this is, so both these algorithms were used for distributed training of uh, let us say neural networks when you had data points distributed uh, across different servers or workers, right. So what was particularly attractive about the both like about both the approaches? So what did we have in the context of uh, let us say parameter server approach? Yeah, so you had a central like it would require fewer iterations or fewer rounds of uh, information exchange, right. So there is a centralized server or parameter server that would uh, that would relay information about the current weights to the individual workers or servers. They would compute gradients on their local uh, on their local devices or it maybe they would compute the gradients locally and aggregate and basically uh, send the gradient information back to the parameter server which is then going to aggregate the gradients and use it to update the weights of the neural network right. So, so the good thing about this particular approach is uh, uh, it has this nice structure it I mean it works fine the, everything is synchronized but the shortcoming of this particular approach is the bandwidth requirement on the centralized server. Uh, if it is communicating with n different agents, so the bandwidth cost is going to be uh, significantly huge, right. On the other hand, we had ring all reduce algorithm where it connected, so there was no centralized entity, different servers were connected in a ring kind of fashion and they would use scatter reduce and all gather steps again in a ring kind of fashion and this through this they would be able to aggregate the gradient information at with the communication cost being. Uh, order 1 or constant in the number of agents, but the shortcoming is that you would require multiple such rounds right as opposed to uh, single parameter server approach. So, in both the approaches though we had assumed that every agent or every worker has the same w naught to start with right. In this case anyway there is it is being uh, in the parameter server server approach it is anyways uh, being monitored through the centralized server that wk is being synchronized with all the server all the workers at all times. But in case of let us say ring all reduce we assume that w naught was known to every agent a priori and it is the same w naught that every agent has and then they compute the gradient information and then every, every agent ends up computing the same w1 because they have the same gradient information right. And then it is the same w1 that every agent now has so they would again end up computing the same w2. But if you really want to uh, decentralize the training of neural networks where every agent starts with their own estimate of how the neural network should look like right what what should be the weights of the neural network let us say. Every agent has its own copy of w naught or other has its own estimate of w naught right and then in that case you would also need a consensus on w naught not just the uh, not just the gradient aggregation part but they would they would always be they will always be uh, a consensus step right which is similar to distributed optimization algorithm or the DGD algorithm distributed gradient descent algorithm that we looked at. Uh, in uh, maybe few lectures ago ok. So, in the same context we are going to uh, uh, look at something popularly known as decentralized SGD or SGD or decentralized stochastic gradient stochastic gradient descent. decentralized stochastic gradient descent algorithm right. So, this is what we are going to look at. When we talk about uh, how quickly the algorithm would converge, so what do you think would the factors be? So, let us say we want to run the uh, we want to run the distributed optimization algorithm right. So, what could control the convergence uh, speed of the algorithm? So, you have an, an a network of agents. So, Essentially we are working in this regime where you have let us say different workers or different servers. So, they may be connected through some topology like this right. 
So the topology of the network is going to uh, play a significant role in terms of the convergence speed, right? So, so we can potentially accelerate convergence speed by choosing the right topology. So for instance, uh, if we work with, let's say we have n agents or n workers, right? And we connect these n workers using a line graph like this. So let's say that we have six workers and we connect them using line graph versus you have six workers where you connect them, let's say using a grid graph. or you have you connect them using ring graph. So these are common topo topologies and you can also have a complete graph right where every every worker is connected to every other worker basically it can exchange information with any worker whatsoever. Okay, so this is your complete graph. So which graph do you think uh, would have the slowest conversion speed if we run a decentralized stochastic gradient descent algorithm? So again, unlike the parameter server approach or the ring all reduce approach, every agent initializes at a different W naught, right? So not only they, have, they would have to uh, optimize the weights of the neural network on their own data, they would also need to ensure that uh, all of the agents arrive at a common W, right? Because eventually it's the same neural network that is being trained locally and uh, at different uh, workers. So the question is among these four topologies, which one do you think uh, would have the fastest or let's say the slowest uh, speed of convergence? The line graph, right? Why? Yeah, the Fiedler, I, so essentially the diameter of this is large. In the sense that, I mean, in this case, the diameter is five, right? So you would need at least five steps for the information to propagate from, let's say, node one to node six, or the worker one to worker six. You would need at least five steps. So diameter is five. What about ring graph? What is the diameter? So d is equal to five here, which is diameter. What about d equal to so three, right? Three. So you, let's say you want to uh, propagate information from this node to this particular node, you would need three, at least three steps. In all, to all of the nodes, you can reach from this particular node in two steps, right? So D is equal to three here. What about grid graph? What is the diameter of this particular graph? Three again. And complete graph, what is the diameter? So complete graph is that every node is connected to every other node, right? So in one step, you can reach. So which graph do you think is a, is, 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 a, is a better graph to work with when you want to run decentralized STD? Yeah, so if you ignore the communication cost, then complete graph would be an ideal thing, right? Because uh, in that case, uh, you would be able to communicate your information with your neighbors in just one step. But the downside of this is, this increases uh, your communication cost, right? Because Every agent would be communicating with n minus one agents in every step, and that would require a huge bandwidth cost uh, for each of the agents, right? Whereas with line graph, every agent or line graph or a ring graph, every agent would at most require to communicate with two neighboring agents. So even though the diameters are small, uh, I mean it may take more iterations to converge, but communication or the band like bandwidth cost is going to be much smaller for these graphs than something like complete graph. So the question is. Does there exist a topology and a graph topology that would actually lead to a very sweet, uh, I mean, a sweet spot between or a good trade off between the communication requirement or the bandwidth requirement and the convergence speed? And we would uh, look at the answer uh, to this particular question towards the end of the lecture. But let's try and uh, see how, like, what are the iterations complexity of different algorithms. Okay. So let's start with the 
So we know what uh, parallel SDD is. So let me sort of reiterate. So in the last lecture, towards the end of the last lecture, we looked at uh, single node training or single node stochastic gradient descent, right? So if you have single node training, so that means everything is centralized. There is there are no distributed workers. There is just one server or one agent which has access to all the data. And if you want to train a model, uh, let's say if you want to train a model on a single server. In the last class, we looked at one particular result where we showed that this expected value of uh, summation k equal to 0 from to t minus 1 this is of the order sigma over square root of t where sigma was the bounded variance on uh, uh, the stochastic gradients right so this this was a result that we looked at towards the end of the last lecture which is that there is just one centralized server or one server to start with Every, all the data is aggregated at one particular server and you are using the entire sort of gradient disk like you are basically running the stochastic gradient descent and you are using that to update the weights and this is the kind of uh, convergence guarantees that you have. For an n node parallel training, so let us say you have n, you have this particular setup, the parameter server approach where the data is distributed across n nodes. So every node sort of uh, computes a gradient and then it sort of relays it back to the centralized server. So for n node parallel training, so you, you basically get a linear speed up. So what do we mean by that? So expected value of uh, Is essentially of order sigma over square root of nt. So that means if we want to achieve like if we want to achieve epsilon accurate solution so we would have to equate in case of a single node training so we would have to equate this to let us say epsilon right. So, the value of t turns out to be sigma square over epsilon square. So, you would need these many iterations in order to get epsilon close to the optimal solution right or epsilon accurate solution for n node or n parallel node. So, we would have sigma over square root of nt and this implies Essentially, it the number of iterations required is 1 over n of the, uh, so you would actually have a linear speed up. So that means parallel SDD would have linear speed up. Okay. So what does uh, parallel SDD do? It so it basically has local computation of the gradient. So at each iteration k, it would compute the gradient, which turns out to be gradient of f the loss function that you are trying to uh, optimize at the current value of xk and the data that is known to server i. So this is your local computation. And then you have xk plus 1 is simply xk minus step size 1 over n. This is a global communication step, right? This is when you need a global communication because you are going to be aggregating gradients from different uh, servers. 
So, if I were to compare the two algorithms in terms, uh, when I say two algorithms, which means uh, ring all reduce and parameter server. So, let us uh, in terms of the iteration cost uh, or the bandwidth cost and the latency and so on. So, you have the algorithm here, you have bandwidth cost. you have latency. So, and you have total cost which is the sum of latency as well as the bandwidth cost. So, if I look at the ring all reduce algorithm. So, what is the bandwidth cost of ring all reduce algorithm? It is it is constant in the number of agents right. So, you get a constant bandwidth cost, but what about the latency? we have 2 times n minus 1 iterations right. We have 2 times n minus 1 iteration, we have n minus 1 iteration for the scatter uh, reduce and we have n minus 1 iterations for the all gather step. So, latency grows like order n, essentially, essentially total cost is order n plus 1 or order n right. If I look at uh, parameter server approach. What is the bandwidth cost for the centralized server order n right. There are n agents n servers. So, latency is one step right in in one step you would be able to aggregate all the information. So, latency is one step. So, if I look at the total cost it is again order n. So, in both approaches total cost is ok. Now, the question is can we try and optimize this total cost which is basically a combination of the bandwidth cost and the latency. Obviously, if we try and optimize this uh, if we were to optimize this. So, that means we would be instead of an agent exchanging information with n neighbors or let us say so, in the parameter server approach the centralized server exchanges information with n neighbors. In ring all reduce it exchanges information with just one or two rather. So, in so somewhere in between where you have some like let us say uh, so because just you I mean in this case you exchange information with just one neighbor the latency grows up right because you would need that many iterations uh, order n number of iterations for this entire scatter and all reduce scatter reduce and all gather operation to get completed and therefore, the total bandwidth cost increases. So, the question is how do we sort of optimize this uh, where we basically we want to reduce this total cost which is a combination of both bandwidth cost as well as latency. So, we want to optimize this. So, we want to basically get to a sweet spot somewhere in between ok. So, you can also think of total cost as the per iteration complexity of the algorithm that is what we are trying to minimize uh, and that is where decentralized SGD would be useful. So, let us look at decentralized LCD now. So, in decentralized SGD as we mentioned there is no global synchronization. So, that means we the agents they do not start or the workers they do not start at the same uh, initial condition or initial weights or initial x naught. So, there is no global synchronization ok and it basically combines local SGD update and then you have partial averaging which is your consensus kind of update. Ok. Something that we have already seen as, as I mentioned uh, if, if you remember the uh, maybe the last few lectures uh, we had already looked at uh, an algorithm for distributed op solving distributed optimization problem where we combine the gradient step and the consensus step right. So, that is what this particular algorithm is. So, we define x i k plus half let us say every agent has their own current estimate of the weights of the neural network which let us call them x i k or x j k. So, we define x i k plus half which is going to be defined using 
a gradient descent step. So, this is a local SGT update, right. So, you have local SGT update followed by partial averaging and partial averaging is basically j over the neighborhood set of i, you have w i j. So, in terms of the algorithm what happens? Every agent performs this local uh, local SGD update. So, they update and they get let us say x i k plus half, x j k plus half and so on and then you get the uh, x i k plus 1 which is going to be uh, a, a, a sort of averaging of the neighbors uh, estimates. So, there is as I said there is no global synchronization unlike the previous examples of parameter server or ring all reduce where we always assume that the x i k every agent has access to the same x i k or every agent and then they again have act like basically we try and get make sure that the agents end up uh, getting access to the same aggregated gradient information. So, that their x i k plus 1 is also going to be the same and the algorithm sort of keeps going on. Here there is no uh, sort of global uh, synchronization. We only have local estimates and then local I mean we kind of run a consensus type of update on the local estimate. So, that these estimates are eventually eventually synchronized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let us say you are like you have your own data and it is the same neural network that we are trying to train, but you have a local copy of that neural network you start with the, your own set of random weights. I have my own set of random weights and I while I perform a local computation or the local update on my own private data, I again I basically exchange certain information I have up, uh, and then through this information exchange I try to get a sense of uh, your data distribution. So, that the overall neural network which is going to be trained it has the same set of weights. So, it is the same network that I am using that you are using or anyone else is using right. Is that clear? So, what is the per iteration communication cost for this algorithm? So, what is per iteration communication cost? So, per iteration communication cost is going to be dependent on the largest degree of the node right. So, the node with the largest degree that is going to be exchanging information with most of the most of the, most of the neighbors right. And let us say the largest degree in the graph is going to be d max. So, this is going to be the per iteration communication cost for this particular algorithm. And this is much much smaller than a parameter server approach where the per iteration communication cost is omega n right. So, the point is this is your largest degree ok. We want to optimize this w i j yes. Not just w i j it is it is also well I mean to some extent yes. So, when we when I say that we want a suitable topology that uh, that reaches a sweet spot between the bandwidth cost and the latency requirement and so on. Also, there is something called a transient iteration that I will come to. So, not just like one thing is you fix the topology and you try and get the right set of WIJs that is one thing. The other thing is you also alter the topology. So, it is not just about getting to the right values of WIJ for a fixed topology, but also like how the nodes are connected is also going to as I said right like how the nodes are going to connected it plays a significant role in terms of how quickly the algorithm is going to converge ok. So, what is the communication overhead for a line graph it is. So, for instance for line graph uh, it is essentially constant right this is the communication overhead. for line graphs. So, if uh, if using D is like decentralized as GD would actually have very small communication overhead particularly when the graph is sparse right when the graphs are sparse you would have very small communication overhead because if the graph is sparse then every node is connected to very few nodes in the graph right. So, if the graph is sparse then you would have very uh, I mean very the communication overhead is going to be small 
But then what is a disadvantage or what is one particular shortcoming of decentralized SGD compared to let's say the and like single node training or the parallel node training or the ring all reduce algorithm. It is this iteration number of iterations k that you are going to take to in order to guarantee similar convergence to epsilon accurate solution that is going to be significantly larger right because I mean there is no consensus on the weights. So, not only we are trying to perform local gradient updates, we are also trying to perform a consensus or the local uh, or the partial averaging right and that makes a task difficult right because you have your own estimate, I have my own estimate and then I am also trying to solve this problem cooperatively. So, essentially unlike the previous case where everyone was already synchronized, so the amount of iterations needed to synchronize all the agents that is not there with the uh, centralized training right. The moment we look at uh, decentralized SGD, uh, we have an extra effort. So, the number of iterations required to get to epsilon accurate solution that is going to be larger ok compared to the centralized training approaches. So, however, Okay. So, DSDD is going to has uh, is going to have a slower convergence because the number of iterations required you also have to take care of the uh, have like consensus part which was not there with the centralized training. Okay. So, if you want to speed up this convergence what do you need to optimize for the graph? So, you we look at Fiedler value or the diameter of the graph is something that we we try and optimize on. But then if you want to if the moment you change it to a uh, complete graph that is when it is it gets optimized like the moment you change it to complete graph, but that increases the bandwidth cost right. So, typically uh, so this convergence speed that depends on something called spectral gap or Fiedler value. So, spectral gap is it's given by if you look at the two norm of this matrix one 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 transpose. So, this is your spectral gap rho. So, you can show that if uh, W is doubly stochastic. In rho, the spectral gap is a number between 0 and 1, ok. And so, if the graph is well connected, that means it is close to a complete graph. What do you think the value of rho should be? It should it be large or small? Just by looking at this definition. So, if graph is well connected, all the w entries are going to be 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n kind of entries. So, this row is almost 0 right ok. So, if the graph is well connected. So, again uh, just like Fiedler value spectral gap is also used to measure the connectivity both like so spectral gap, diameter, Fiedler values these are sort of uh, interrelated to each other and again this quantity is also used to measure the connectivity of the graph and if the graph is well connected rho is close to 0 ok. And if the graph likewise is sparsely connected, then rho is going to be close to 1. So, for instance, uh, for example, uh, for ring graphs, your rho is the order 1 minus 1 over n square where n is in total number of nodes. So, as you make n very large and large right. So, it will take forever for the information to propagate and you can see that the spectral gap is going to be almost close to 1 ok. And that you can also imagine it is if it is a ring you would need uh, at least n by 2 steps to propagate your information with uh, like all your neighbors. <coughs> 